the lone, mighty battleship, the Missouri, would henceforth become an eternal symbol of peace. Some may say it's an irony for a vessel so symbolic of the nation's power and might would come to represent peace instead. But it's a poetic contradiction made all the more powerful by the contrast and a testament to what we have learned so painfully in two world wars and other conflicts since, that we must forever remain vigilant in safeguarding peace and liberty against tyranny and injustice. Following the formal surrender, at General MacArthur's orders to, quote, start them now, a message went out to several hundred aircrafts of the Navy and Army Air Forces. The timing and coordination were remarkable, according to the navigator and officer of the deck, Jim Starnes. The planes were so numerous that they blackened the sky for a time. Lieutenant Bob Balfour of the 3rd Fleet Staff actually felt a sense of concern that the airplanes were so low they might clip the top of the ships. It was truly a dramatic moment, and a huge war was over. Today, a plaque marks the exact spot where the surrender took place, just a few feet from here on the starboard side of the captain's veranda. We now call it the Surrender Deck. It's visited each day, sometimes by thousands of individuals from around the world who come to experience a piece of history and an icon of peace. But impressive, as impressive as the Missouri is, and most important is the valor of the veterans whom she represents. After the surrender, General MacArthur broadcast the following radio message. His words were carried home to every continent. They are particularly meaningful when one considers that for so many years throughout World War II, men on both warring sides crouched in the battlefield box holes of the world, often not even permitted the luxury of simply standing up straight for fear of being caught in enemy sights. Even the sky itself was often a source of danger, from the relentlessly downpouring rain or the merciless sun to countless bombardments cast from air and sea. And the symbolism was not lost on MacArthur. In my earnest hope, and indeed the hope of all mankind, that from this solemn occasion a better world shall emerge out of the blood and carnage of the past. A world dedicated to the dignity of man and the fulfillment of his most cherished wish for freedom, tolerance, and justice. Let us pray that peace be now restored to the world and that God will preserve it always. These proceedings are closed. Today's ceremony pays tribute to the courageous soldiers, sailors, marines, airmen, coast guardmen, and merchant marines who served America with distinction. All of these veterans are heroes. Welcome all World War II veterans today. I would like to introduce a member of the Board of Directors of the USS Missouri Memorial Association. The association, the association retains and operates the Missouri as a historic attraction with the support of visitors, membership, grants, and the generosity of donors. As our next speaker will tell you, we take great pride in that we have, entrusted, we have been entrusted by the Navy and the people of the United States with the care and preservation of our nation's last battleship. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ms. Ruth Ann Becker, member of the board, USS Missouri Memorial Association. Good morning. On behalf of the board of directors, I am honored to extend warmest aloha to the World War II veterans who are with us here today, many of whom were brought here by the Greatest Generation Foundation. We believe you each deserve individual recognition, and so we are going to make that happen this morning. So please, as your name is read, stand, or if you prefer, raise your hand. And audience, please applause until all names have been read. Help me with this. Beginning with the World War II veterans who are hosted by the Greatest Generation Foundation, Second Lieutenant Kenneth Barheit. Private First Class Howard Beasley. Major Joseph Clark. Private First Class Edward Clark. Women's Air Force Service Pilot Virginia Lee Dorr. Seaman First Class William Green. Sergeant Mary Griggs. Women's Air Force Service Pilot Bernice Haydu. 
Sergeant E. Bruce Heilman. Staff Sergeant Theodore Ogilin. Women's Air Force Service Pilot Shirley Cruz. Seaman Second Class Joseph Lanier II. Sergeant Major Roque Marquez. Technician Fifth Grade Eugene Roberts. I'd like to also ask any other World War II veterans whose names we may have missed to please stand as well. I think, uh, there we go. All right. Thank you for that. And so now, audience, please join us. In